Hello everybody, I'm Nick and welcome to another episode of Code Cop, the series where we go over questionable advice and usually really bad advice offered on places like LinkedIn, Twitter or blogs and we try to turn it into good advice. In this video I have just an objectively wrong piece of advice but I think it's twice as harmful as other posts and in this video I'm going to explain why. If you like our content and you want to see more make sure you subscribe for more training check out my courses on domtrain.com. Okay so here is the advice presented in that post consider string.intern to save memory. So you have string A equals string.intern hello world and then string B equals string.intern hello world. Now, in case you don't know what string interning is, .NET has a special place in memory where you can put strings and then if a string that you have in your application has the exact same value as a string you already allocated, you can actually point back to that pre-allocated string. And there's some defaults, for example, string literals by default will be interned. So you don't need to go ahead and manually intern them. However, this happens for compile time string literals. There's some very, very specific criteria where string interning happens by default. And that's why you have the option if you know exactly what you're doing to say string dot intern and enter a string in a proactive way. That being said, it is extremely unlikely you will ever, ever, ever need to manually intern a string. The compiler is pretty good in doing it when it makes sense and pretty good in not doing it when it doesn't. So could technically string interning allow you to save memory by saying string dot intern pass a variable in and then point to that if needed again in memory? Well, yes, in very specific scenarios, it can because strings, as they're being composed, they're being reallocated in memory over and over and over again. However, this example is just wrong. And the reception of this post is fantastic. Okay, great. Thanks for the insight. Amazing. It's funny because it feeds back to my second problem with this post. I'm going to explain it later in the video, but I also want to take a look at the text provided alongside just to get some context. So this is the text provided when the post was posted. Why would you allocate two identical strings to two different memory locations? You do not have to. Use string.intern. String interning can save memory when your application uses many identical string literals, which is wrong because you wouldn't actually use it with string literals, you would use it with string variables. Literals are already interned. By interning a string, you ensure that all references to the identical string points to the same location memory, reducing overall memory usage. Again, string literals in here this is not just a technique for string literals. It can happen for any string. It just happens by default on compile time string literals. However, be careful using it because the interpool is not garbage collected frequently, which could increase memory usage if used excessively. And then in two hours, I'm going to share four more tips about strings that you should know. Also, I'll share benchmarks for this one. This never happened. Now, I want to take this advice and take it to the ID to show you just why it's wrong. So here in the ID, I'm going to go to program.cs and I'm going to paste that exact same code. I'm going to build it and then quickly run it. In fact, I will need a console.write line R same to show you that, yeah, okay, if I run this, you're going to get the exact same reference and we're using reference equals because we want to check the references in memory, not the values. If you do an equals or equal signs on strings, they're actually checked on their value, even though the reference types are a bit special. But here's where it gets interesting. But before I tell you where it gets interesting, I'd like to let you know that we just launched our brand new course on Dome Trend called Writing Clean Code in C Sharp. And I know clean code doesn't really exist. It is a bit of a marketing term popularized by Uncle Bob, but there are some practices that can help you write better code. And in that course, Guillaume Ferreira, which has an awesome YouTube channel as well, will teach you everything you need to know to write modern C Sharp using the latest best practices. Now to celebrate the launch, I'd like to offer the first 200 of you a 15% discount code. So use code CLEAN15 at checkout to claim it and don't miss this opportunity to learn how to write elegant C Sharp. Okay, so what's the interesting thing all about? Well, if I go ahead and I just remove the string dot intern call over here, and I leave the rest of the code exactly as it is, what's what happens? These two will still say true. And that is because they are both string literals. So hello world in memory will only be allocated once. I can actually show you that by debugging and inspecting the memory at runtime. Let's go ahead and have a breakpoint over here, debug this code, and let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and just load all the memory. So this is all the memory of my application. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to step over this and say load differences. You can see I have one string over here 
that one string, if I scroll all the way down, as you can see, is hello world at this memory address. And if I step over hello world again, then if I load memory again, you can see I have no difference. We didn't allocate a new string. That is because the same memory was used to represent the same string because the value is the same and I know that these strings are interned, so they couldn't possibly have a different value, hence the same reference, hence very, very efficient memory-wise. Now, here's where this becomes interesting. What if I had hello here and world here? No space. And I had string a in fact i'm gonna change this to hello just to make it easier to understand and this world and i said a equals hello plus and i do this and then i do the same thing over here what do you think will happen now let's go ahead and run it will the concatenate the strings have the same memory address no, they won't, even though they will both produce the exact same string. And let's go ahead and see that at runtime. So if I step over this, you'll see we compose this string. If I go to memory, you should be able to see it at the end of the strings. But if I say step over this one as well and I load memory, I still allocate it, as you can see, one string all the way down here. Here you go. I have hello world created twice in two separate addresses even though technically the compiler has anything it needs at compile time to produce these two strings now i could say string dot intern if i wanted to and i could be proactive about it so i can say string dot intern and i'm saying yeah go ahead and intern them then as you can see I get true. In that case, the references are equal, but the compiler won't do that by default. So don't assume that every string ever, even if it's very obvious that it will be interned because it won't. And this would be the same if I had something like a string interpolation, for example. If I use that, then as you're going to see, same thing by default, they are false. So there are very specific conditions where things are interned, but you have to understand that even though you can save memory in interning something, Interning something has a cost. Checking if it's intern, getting it from the intern pool, returning it, like, it is not a free operation. And the compiler, in almost every single case, knows better. Do not touch it. Now, why do I say that this post is harmful in more ways than one? Well, it's harmful because later it came out, and I kind of suspected it as well, that, that this post was an April Fool's joke. Now, here's why I think it's a really bad idea to make April Fool's jokes like this. This can look like legitimate advice. There's no sarcasm. There's no obvious aspect to it saying that this is an April Fool's joke. This just appears like any other post that could be bad advice on LinkedIn. In fact, that person who posted this has provided bad advice in the past. So how do you know if it is part of the good advice or the bad advice? You don't. Plus, even though there is a warning that this now is an April Fool's joke, when it was posted for a day, there wasn't such thing and there was no obvious aspect to it. Meaning that many people saw that and many people now will go ahead and use this advice because that person said it. I think April Fool's jokes that are not obviously sarcasm, that they have no redeeming qualities in showing that, yeah, that piece of advice is actually bad, shouldn't exist because then you don't know who you follow you don't know who you trust it just gets really really messy so even though this was a joke this is advice that people do make mistakes about all the time i see this wrong all the time all of us have to be better for our audience so posts like this really bother me because they can lead to a developer going at work on Monday trying to apply this because they never saw the update, which is just an edit in a post they already saw, so LinkedIn will never show them again that post. Terrible, I would recommend whoever posted this to just delete it altogether. Bad, bad, bad idea. But I want to know your thoughts. What do you think about this? And do you think there's room for April Fool's jokes that could potentially be harmful? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching, and as always, keep coding.